All right, so we have Ashton Robertson here on the Project Bring Me Life podcast. It's our first podcast on a Thursday, so pretty excited. Uh, for this podcast, um, we're going to do it a little bit differently than on Tuesday. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more open and free-flowing. Um, so Ashton today released his new album. Yeah, I technically, I will, I'm about to release it right now. And awesome. Click enter on this post. So if you want to listen, here you go. So We're going to do it right now. He's going to post his link, and uh, his new album is being released at this very second. Um, so <laughs> this is very exciting. His new album is a remix album. And what was the title? Cosmic Fractals. Cosmic Fractals. I just posted it on the Spaceship Earth page. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> So, yeah, let me share it on my page. Sharing on Project Bring Me to Life's Facebook. If you guys wanted, you could listen to it while we're doing the podcast, have a little bit lower, um, and have a little nice, awesome background music. Um, this is oh. Spaceship Earth's second album he's releasing. Uh, so, it's got a lot going on. And I was going to ask you what, uh, what inspired you to create the remix album. Um, I didn't really plan on it, honestly. I just, I've been in the process of making what I call my first album for like about a year and a half, um, which is an album that technically hasn't come out yet called Interdimensional Passport. Um, and then in the middle of that process, I entered a few remix contests and started accumulating and getting better at making remixes and just kind of finished it in the process while kind of trying to like, because when you work on a project too, like too singularly focused, at least for me, I like the work started to get watered down. So the more space I took away from my music and making the remixes, I would come back and make, I feel like better music in the end. So Contact was kind of like a baby out of that. And this album is, because I had like 30 tracks. Um, so Contact, I just put uh, eight tracks, not necessarily the worst at all, but just put eight tracks to make an album. And then uh, Interdimensional Passport will come out in a few months. Nice, awesome. What was your, I guess, favorite uh, track to work on? Um, on the remix album? Mm. They were all pretty fun. Each one was super unique. Um, There's like a range of genres, which was super fun to experiment. Like the third, well, the fourth and fifth tracker, like have like some 808 basses, which I don't usually use, like more uh, (laughs) K-pop down tempo, like really down tempo, like sensual kind of vibe. And then the other ones are more up tempo. but my favorite one is probably the second track, um, Find Your Cloud by Papadozio, because, well, I don't think they've ever had a remix of any of their remix songs before. Right. And um, that band's just changed my life so much in the last few years that it's, I feel like they need the promotion. Like, I hope someone listens to Find Your Cloud and has never heard of Papadozio and they find them. Like, that's what <laughs> That song actually helped me get to your set at. 3DL because we were actually in the dinner hall and I walked outside to go get my hula hoop and I probably wouldn't have known exactly what stage you were on because everything was changing so much and that wasn't really anybody's fault but I heard that song and like took off and then found you on stage. That's it awesome. Was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. You were talking about 3DL? I was talking about 3DL. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 3DL is amazing. Yeah, 3DL. That was the first time I ever played that track. Really? Yeah, they'll find your cloud. I wanted to play it there because uh, Papadozio is from Asheville. Yeah. And that's where 3DL was. So. You actually missed Mr. Stead at 3DO. He had to run and get you like <laughs> mid dinner line. We fought over who was going to come get you, though. Yeah. yeah. I, we, were, we were determined yeah. to make sure you didn't I was want literally to napping as my set and it was supposed to start. I thought it was supposed to start an hour later. Yeah. And you had a dream that that was going to happen. Yeah, I had a dream, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I had a dream, so I'll definitely be on time. And then I, like, made sure to look at the schedule, and the schedule had, like, 
six fifteen to seven fifteen, and then listed four bands, and I was at the bottom of that. So it said Spaceship Birth, and right next under that said seven p.m. So I was like, sweet, mm. nap until seven. Yeah, and then it was totally late. Yeah, Billy Mays was actually the one who yeah, like told wanted. us to get. He's like, make sure you tell Ashton. Are you gonna go tell Ashton? Like, was, and we've been sitting in food for like a while, and like we were almost <laughs> getting ready to get it, and we were like, oh no. Which one of us is gonna go? And he was like, "I'm doing it. I'm running." And he just took off before we. You don't even like running. I don't, but I was gonna run for you. <laughs> I don't like running. It's yeah, not my, my reaction when he got there was like, "No way!" <laughs> yeah, like, dude, I came a long way. This festival and this my set is not good. So I got there like ten minutes. Wait, what? They were actually still like um, taking off their equipment, weren't they? The other the people. Yeah, I think they let them play longer because they. Got the message that I wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep going. Yeah, yeah festivals are really, really unique experience. Um, there's a huge range of different kinds of festivals too. Like this year, I've played uh, Root Wire and 3DL, and I've uh, Root Wire is like more same kind of vibe, like spiritual kind of festival. And I've played Yoga Fest, was like super spiritual. But then I've played festivals where not it's just electronic music and it's just been interesting is because I play guitar over my electronic music I'd get into festivals that most electronic music normally wouldn't mm -hmm. so some festivals I'll be like the electronic artist at the jam band festival or other festivals I'll be on like the jam stage because it's an all electronic festival mm -hmm. and I'm like unique to that which is it's been a really interesting experience so far to in, like hear people's uh, feedback like from my music uh, just like people saying that they never really liked electronic music before or like vice versa, like, oh, I never really liked guitar, or like jam music. I've liked electronic music for like the last 20 years. And like, I heard you and I was like, yeah, like that's really cool, the combination. It's just been interesting, like getting feedback on both like spectrums, mm -hmm. like, oh, this is too much. Uh, or this is uh, not nearly enough electronic. It's too much guitar or it's, not enough guitar for the jam band kids. They're like, uh, it's it's been interesting to find a balance. So I've been trying to make a wider range of genres and tempos and uh, just overall sounds and different instruments, mm -hmm. different scales. Like, it's fun to switch up using a lot of like Middle Eastern scales. I've learned a lot of Middle Eastern scales since making electronic music. And, but then not like sticking with that all the time and still using like the standard scales you would hear in America all the time, like more rock, like pentatonic scales and stuff like that. Pentatonics is a, what is that? Because I know it's also a band, uh, like a acapella group. Um, a pentatonic scale is kind of like a go-to scale for soloing in rock. It's called penta because... The, that's derived from, well, penta means five. So it's a five note scale. Um, always the same intervals for every key. So you can like use the scale pattern in every key. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so do you, do you feel like um, uh, you have an edge with your electronic music slash uh, live instrumentation? Um, do you feel like uh, like that sets you apart from, from a lot of people who play at festivals? Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm honestly surprised that it's not more out there, even just like some live keyboards over some electronic music, because most electronic music's made on the keyboard anyway. But yeah, it really does like give me that edge that I didn't really necessarily expect at first but then have really really enjoyed and then kind of saw the potential a few months ago of like whoa I can technically be like for me which is good more valuable because I have the live instrumentation and but then also just I can go play a different with a huge range of artists um, I've had shows where there was three bands and then I was the closing act and 
to bands. We just had so much fun together because I used to be in bands and I love that kind of vibe. Um, Spaceship Earth used to actually be a three-piece band. It was a drummer, a bass player, and then I played guitar and sang and then used my computer and keyboard casually, but mainly just played guitar and sang. And so uh, Spaceship Earth really transformed. It started in um, 2012, but then I made it a solo project in like January 2013. So I really haven't been doing it that long. When did, uh, in 2012, when did it start? When did you guys first come together? Um, I think it was the spring I found my drummer after being in a band that I had, uh, I, I pretty much quit the other band that I was in, um, which was a lot of fun and I had a lot of experiences, uh, a lot of great experiences. Um, and then for like, well, there was probably like a year in between that though, because I remember for like seven months straight, I had a notepad and that's how long it took me to come up with the name Spaceship Earth. I probably had like anywhere between 100 and 500 names on a list <laughs> and like, just wanted to come up with the best name and that one just was like near the end of the process and us brainstorming one day and I came up with it and I was like, oh man, that's it. Yeah. And for me, I feel like if anyone, if anyone on earth can realize that we're like hurling through space on this like empty sea of nothing, then you can, I don't know, for me, that just shifted my consciousness so hardcore, like, wow, our life is so, such a blessing, and we should all appreciate it more, and mm -hmm. we should treat the earth better, and um, also, I feel like the earth is, like, a living organism, it's, like, one thing, we're part of that, and maybe uh, it doesn't have to be contained to our solar system, maybe earth could be, like, a spaceship literally and like go other places i've heard that but um, we're just orbiting the sun because yeah, we've just always been told to be orbiting the sun if we all believed elsewise mm -hmm. we could go elsewhere mm -hmm. um we have a question samantha wants to know if you have any clips from the original three-piece spaceship earth because they would be interesting to hear <laughs> <laughs> um, i've got to have some somewhere there's got to be you should make like a the the history of spaceship earth just like a real quick like video or something sometime. For yeah, yeah. I'll make a Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like you've had a lot of <laughs> really steps. Bad, yeah. I mean, everybody should have Wikipedia. Right. We need a project bring you to life Wikipedia. Why is that not Who a wants thing? To do that? Let's make that a thing. Um, <laughs> I love Wikipedia. Yeah, I, that yeah. should be a thing, though. I learned um, about so much in Wikipedia. Right? Yeah. Wikipedia has uh, got a lot of information. It's ridiculous. But yeah, in general, it sounds like you've had like a lot of steps to your project, so that'd be a good thing to do like a, a history for everybody. They want to hear what you what you started out as. Too. Yeah, it was like I used to be a band in, in high school called Aviators, and I was a guitar player, and we all moved to Kalamazoo, Michigan together. Mm. We go to Western. Michigan University, and they kicked me out of the band within a few months of us moving out there. And they said I wasn't good enough. Mm. So I, that was like in 2008. So I started getting a lot better. And then probably in 2010, I, I, well, I ran, dropped out of school and ran away to California. <laughs> and then I pretty much wrote my first song that year about kind of like, it's called Off the Map. I like, just really like, wanted to go leave what I had known for so long, um, go to the West Coast. It was so awesome. Yeah. Um, and then came back in 2011, and that's when I really started making music on my own and like seeking out people to be in bands with for the first time instead of just playing by myself and jamming with people. Um, 2011 and 2012 was like, huge year for me going to music festivals for the first time and being exposed to electronic music. I didn't really listen to electronic music. Like even in May, the first time I heard a dubstep was in 2010 and I was like, oh, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> and I, but I didn't really listen to it that much. I listened to, you know, a lot, a lot of Radiohead and Incubus. And I mean, I listened to any kind of music, like 
Rhee knows I listen to a lot of pop music. Uh, what would be called? Speaking of Rhee, shout out because music. she's all in here and she just asked you, why do you make music in general, Ashton? And she said, I love the way Ashton bears words things. <laughs> um, why do I make music? Uh, I think it's part of my sole mission during this life for me to be making music. One thing that really clicked for me, I feel like what you do when you're at a show and you're listening to music, it's kind of creating a little mini reality for you, really an entire reality. So I was really into spirituality before I got into music. So for me, music was this catalyst for me to get out in the world more, first of all, um, get out of my hermit spirituality stuff, and then have a way to express through my music, my spirituality and uh, my feelings about everything. But I really realized that music creates an entire reality and most people weren't really considering that as they made their music. So for me, the reality that I want to live in is heavenly and epic and fun and dynamic and inspiring and magical and miraculous. I don't know, things like that. So. I want to create this space, literally, for people to heal themselves and uh, you know dance out their fears. I want people to just feel the music. You don't have to believe what I say, or, and that's really a good. Like later on, I want to really put all my thoughts down and release a book. Um, an album where every chapter is a song. Mm. Um, so I'm really using music as my platform for all of my art and creation. Mm. Like it's just kind of the beginning for me. I realized Spaceship Birth, like I want to make clothes and books and poetry and um, I have crazy ideas about building cities and uh, festivals and just entire worlds. Like I would love to build a world. But you're already doing a lot of those things, aren't you? We've got shirts, and you, you're working on a website. You got your CDs. Oh, yeah. You've got all kinds of stuff going. You do poetry. Thank you. And we're we're slowly getting to creating community. Yep. Yeah. Good eventually, community. that's the main goal of spirituality, or <laughs> well, I guess uh, <laughs> spiritual birth. And spirituality. The main goal for Spatial Birth is to eventually, well, it's co creation. That's the idea that all of us are on the spaceship and we're all, there's no passengers, we're all crewed. Like I keep seeing that everywhere. Um, so I also had this thought when I was making the idea of Spatial Birth because I had this experience at festivals where I felt like what I was watching on stage was like a projection of my mind. So during the creation of the project, I like began to understand that this wasn't my project and this project was not only going to be fueled by other people, but was literally being manifested through the entire collective of earth for it to like, just come. I just happened to be like a door that it came through and yeah, I feel strongly about that. Like the, like when people are going to be in the crowd and being like, wow, I'm making this happen. And I'll be like, yeah, you literally have been making this happen for like two years and you've been trying to manifest this. And I just have been, well, I think everyone's doing that with everything that they do, but this project in particular, I like had full awareness of that while I was making it, which I thought was super unique because in the end it's just me making all of it and it's just one person, but it's really all of us. Yeah, I was also I was gonna ask you about uh, uh, people meditating during your sets. Um, I often love meditating uh, while you're playing, and I know there's a lot of other people there that, while they're listening to you play at your shows, they will just automatically sit down uh, next to your your spot and uh, and just meditate for your set. Yeah, that's also been uh, like two worlds that I've been able to slightly bridge, like the meditation and like the dance world. 
where certain people will say to music like i can't even dance this i just have to meditate mm. and there's been well it first started happening because i pretty much like asked you guys to meditate on stage i just had this idea that instead of well i love having dancers and welcome that as much as possible too but instead of the typical having dancers on stage having some people meditate on stage um just kind of sending out good energy into the crowd to kind of like amplify the energy of the music and the space in general and it really worked and a few months later when i wasn't having like i did like three shows where we had like meditators like mm -hmm. decided beforehand and then i never did it again but i've had multiple shows where people just like eight people start simultaneously or like um spontaneously meditating and I, I was, there's one show in Kalamazoo where it happened and like everyone got on stage, like there was like eight people meditating and there was like just a few people dancing and I just like kept going and just like was nearly brought to tears of, I don't know, that experience, like I was just humbled by all, really surprised and blown away that I could make, a pe make people do that. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, really, creating music and then people dance and move and like think certain things to me like that's so cool that's so crazy and if it can be like in an inward way i think that's so important that i can make people look inward because um, i think self-reflection is like the foundation of being a good person mm. you said they even got in like a pyramid and stuff for you right like they, they got into like a yeah like a specific kind of thing was like they weird. were activating stuff it was crazy <laughs> like four people on the bottom and three people on top and like well five people on the bottom like one person in the middle and three on top so it just like made this pyramid nice. i was like was, what's going on the chat room <laughs> says they love your enthusiasm by the way and to keep it up <sighs> And <laughs> Samantha wants to know where the Spaceship Earth shirts can be gotten. <laughs> um, well, I'm in the process of it. making them right now. Um, I like custom make them all with stencils and spray paint. And um, before I used bleached and vinegar, which is really harmful. <laughs> so well, it works on the shirts, but just like when you breathe it in, it's really toxic. So I've been trying to find other ways. And it's... Um, definitely been a process mm. we're getting you a website made too so eventually they'll be able to get be on your website yep um Where are you really, really excited hand? about the website just any of it yeah but soon i will post the the picture or the um i have pictures of the clothes and t-shirts and i think um i'm gonna post some poetry that i have and just like give it away for free and like some sample packs of like audio if you want to like if you make electronic music and i post that up there for free of some samples that i've made and then like hand collected and that'll be like on the spaceshipearth.bandcamp.com website it'll just say music and it'll say merch but i don't have enough to do that right now. we're building inventory you're almost there. inventory is coming mm -hmm. we have another question cool um after this you should see if anybody wants to come on uh, on the game okay um, we actually have a question from Alor Snow. Whoa! <laughs> You're out there. She's been watching the whole time, but you guys have been flowing so awesomely, I haven't even got to tell you. But she wants to know that if Ashton was stuck on a deserted island with any other musician to talk to, to get inspiration from, who would it be? Nice. Oh my Good gosh. Two thumbs up. And everybody was so excited when she joined the chat room because they were like, no, the name is in the box! <laughs> oh, yeah. that's such a good box up in there. I know, it's getting um, there. Things are happening. <laughs> Any musician on a deserted island? This one's tough. Um. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm not talking to you guys. I have so many, so many going through my head. Um. If I had to pick one musician to be stuck on a deserted island with, um, is it like end of the world scenario? Like, she didn't say. How about you tell us? Okay, I think yeah. she just wants to know who you would enjoy being stuck on an island with to work with, something like that. Okay. 
Pick one artist. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to go with Alice Space Dog because right. I feel like yes. having a singer and um, potentially if it's the end of the world, um, having a female would be important to extend the, the human link. race. Really? I need the link. All right. Um, yeah, Alice Space Dog, uh, she let me remix her song. She gave me the stems and it's the last track on the remix album. So if you're curious who Alice Space Dog is, check out my 12th track on the album that I just released and you'll know what I'm talking about and I hope one day soon to make, she'll just have some vocals over one of my tracks. I've been in contact with her for a little bit. Mm. Oh, She's really cool. Um, what was her name? Alice Space Dog. Was that the one that was at 3DL? No, she's never played a show in the United States, actually. Really? Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, she's from Australia and Germany. So I was like, I found her music like two years ago, and it was super potent, like spiritual knowledge, wisdom guru girl, like who makes her own electronic music and then sings over it. So I was like, oh my God, it's like the greatest thing. And then like a year and a half later, I got the courage to like message her and she messaged me back and I asked her for some stems and like acapellas. So she gave me four or five, she gave me like a main vocal track, a backup vocal track and two guitar line tracks. And that's all she gave me. So that's like in the remix, you'll just like everything else was completely made by me. And that's pretty much how every other remix is except for a few of them. And, like the older ones, I just like took the song, put it in, Ableton and like played over it, drums, bass, guitar, and just kind of molded it. But as I got more experienced, I'd uh, quite like half of the remixes were permission from the artist to let me do the remix. Mm -hmm. And I got individual stems, which was super awesome experience. Mm -hmm. So cool. So stem is um, kind of like a sample? Yeah, it would be like an audio sample of like a vocal track or a wompy womp squish and like, <laughs> like some drums. Wompy, womp, like, womp, womp, womp. <laughs> <laughs> you'll you'll know if you don't know what a squish is, I recommend listening to the remix album. Maybe the Imagine Dragon track, like the snare. Squishy. <laughs> uh, did, is there the, did somebody post a link in the chat room? For the uh, band cam? Um, I can do that. I think a boy might come on. She's she's deciding. Oh right. my god. Oh, come on, Laura, you get in here right now. Oh. <laughs> We're not gonna um, talk until you come in. Re said she wants I think it was Re. Somebody said they want to know if you'll record a live set so that people that haven't gotten to see you live would get to see you. Um yeah, set. that's actually my been on my mind for a little bit now. Um I wanted to release this remix album and I, so I have another album that's going to come out in a few months. So the first thing I'm going to do after this, before I release my next album, is put up a live, like, half an hour to an hour mix of my first album, my remix album, and then my big album, which is 23 songs. So, like, the world has no idea that I have 23 songs that um, are all originals. And then I'll, so I'll probably post, like, at least an hour mix um, with – me doing live guitar the whole time and live effects and do a whole live set mm. and post it up really soon. Nice. Yeah. It's really cool. You can do it on podcast once we figure that out. Yeah, I think maybe I figured it out actually. Really? Yeah. That would be so cool. Yeah. I think it would be pretty easy. We can take a break and uh, go to special birth music. Not right now. Right. When we're we could try. We should try later. I think yeah. I might have figured it out. That'd be cool. Tenth party on Tuesday. <laughs> Is Laura coming in? Um, I don't think so. I think she's a little busy doing other things. I understand. Uh, <laughs> that's so good. But they love you. We all love you. I love you guys. Yeah, love you too. Um, is it? Uh, how long has it been? Um, it is eight thirty-one. Sweet. Half an hour. It's been really fun. Uh. Testing. It's our first uh, first Thursday podcast, and uh, Ashton is our first guest on the Thursday podcast, which is a, a more flowy podcast. He was our first guest on uh, the Tuesday podcast. Too. He was. Uh, he's been 
one of the most consistent uh, persons on the podcast. Uh, when I was doing it for Eternal Tribe, and uh, he was like always there. When I was doing it just for myself, he was he was there too. So thank you for like always being down to do this podcast thing. It's been Dude, so much of fun. course. Um, for me, the podcast thing thing has been, it's been really great being by you guys because you guys like inspire me to like get on camera and video more and doing it. I like made my first video blog. I haven't even posted it yet, but it was so healing just walking in the woods talking to myself. And then I was like, I did a five minute one, and then like I did like a twenty minute one. Mm -hmm. I'd never have talked to myself for twenty yeah. straight minutes. It was like afterwards I literally my body was like I feel so empty and open mm -hmm. and I was just like vibrating, like, oh my God, like help me what I was talking about in the video, like help me realize what I was thinking about. And sure. it was cool. Yeah. Uh